Almighty God, his scammers this morning. Mm. We present to you, Lord God, the gunmen this morning. We present to you, Lord God, the drunkards this morning. We present to you, Lord God, the mongers this morning. We present before you, Lord God, those God Almighty, the witches and the warlocks, oh God. We pray right now, Lord God, that you will go in, Lord God, and you will break down your idols this morning. You will use the Holy Ghost to burn up, mighty God. Your in the place name of worship of this morning. Yes, yes, and let your name be glorified, oh God. Let your name alone be glorified, oh glorified dear Jesus. We pray, Almighty God, for our leaders of government this morning. We pray for the prime ministers. Mm. We pray for the leader of the opposition. We yes, pray Lord, for yes, all those Lord. leaders, God Almighty. Help them, Lord God, that you will remove the scales from their eyes this morning. And help them to realize, God, not until they put you first, Thank God, you. then this country will not be mm. what you desire it to be. Oh, God, we pray this morning, Lord, that everywhere, oh, God, that is open, Lord, that your name will be called this morning. We pray, God Almighty, that it will be called out of hearts that are true, out of hearts that are pure. Mighty God, we pray at this time, Lord, for those that are in the hospitals. Mm. We pray, God, that you will bring healing, oh yes, God, Lord. upon the yes, land this yes, morning. Lord. We, call we pray upon for you those this who morning. are, no, Lord, who are filled with COVID this morning. We put them, oh God, at your feet oh, this morning. Oh, and we Jesus. know, God, we just like how Lord, you heal blind Bartimaeus, just like how, oh God, you said, you touch God. me. Please and that woman me. was healed, oh God. Mm. We pray at this time, you, Lord, Jesus. that you will heal them this morning. Thank you, Lord. Into the prison houses this morning, yes. God. Yes, Lord. Save them, oh God, yes, we Lord. pray this yes, morning. Lord. Oh God, we Be know, Lord God, people, Lord, that they no cannot be socially, oh God, distance this morning. But I pray, God, that your presence will make a difference, Lord. Your presence this morning, God, yes, yes. will make a difference in their lives. I pray, oh God, for those, Lord Jesus, because of what is happening, oh God, in the world, and especially in Jamaica, Lord, they are saying that they cannot trust the church anymore. They will not go to church anymore. Mm. I pray, God, that you will again. speak to even them even now, Lord. Jesus. Even where they are oh, at this moment, oh yes, God. Lord. Yes, Reach Lord. out to them, oh God. You have a way of reaching out, oh, oh God, Jesus. to those who are lost and dying. I pray, God, that you will reach out to them right now mm. and help them, Lord, to know that there is a bomb in Gilead. And if they only call upon you, Lord, yes. you promise to hear second and to Lord, understand. Second. You said, if my people mm. who are called by my name, if they will humble themselves, if they will pray, if they will turn from their wicked ways, then you promise to come and to heal their lands. Heal us this morning, I pray, O oh God. I pray, O oh God, that you will continue to curfew this place, Almighty God. Let our hearts be where it ought to be this morning so that we can be blessed by you. Take over the rest of the service, I beg, as I say thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Do you anticipate the second coming of Christ? Oh, Believers, God. let me oh, see God. you wave your hands. I'm looking yes. forward. I am yes. looking forward yes. to his second coming. Oh. And Hallelujah. this morning we are in the sanctuary. We're going to lift our hands to the Hallelujah. King of Kings and the Hallelujah. Lord of Lords. Praise team. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. I lift my hands to the coming king yes he's coming again to the great i am to you i bring for your the
Come and care to the great I am. To you I bring up for your the one. You're the one, you're the one, Lord. Who reigns within my heart. Oh, and I will say no more. No, sorry, God. None other, none other is worthy of all the praise. Glory.
to Let's give him everything, everything this morning. I say, believers, in his sanctuary this morning, let us just let go of self, let go of everything this morning and worship him because he deserves it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me hear those in the annex give him the highest praise. Hallelujah. Let me hear those over the, my left side here give him the highest praise. Those in the middle aisle give him the highest praise. Let me hear those over here give him the highest praise. Let me hear those on the platform. Praise. Hallelujah. Those on Zoom. Those on Zoom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those who are on Facebook, give him the highest praise. Wherever Hallelujah. you are this morning, God, there is God. no distance as far as God is concerned. Hallelujah. Bless the mighty name. Right where you are. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Hallelujah. He deserves it. He deserves it. He deserves it. I welcome you. Welcome you. Welcome you. Welcome you to the Lord's house uh, on this seventh day of the new month, November 2021. Isn't God good? 11 months have gone already. Where is the time going? We can't even keep up with the time. But one thing I'm sure this morning is that God promises to be with his people. And so I welcome you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, the name of the blessed Holy Spirit. And I trust this morning as we lift up praises to him that they will go up a sweet smelling savor. And he will accept our praises. Welcome. I want you to feel very comfortable, but not too comfortable where you're not going to praise the Lord. You're going to have to work with God's servant when he comes to deliver the word in a short while. I'm looking around to see if there's anyone here for the first time or anyone who has not been here in a long while. I'm not seeing any such person. So by now I know you're feeling very welcome. Those of you who are on location here at the Burnt Savannah Church of the Nazarene. For those who are joining via Zoom, welcome. It's always nice to have you. And for those who are joining us via Facebook, so nice to have you. We have some wonderful, faithful followers on Facebook and we welcome you most heartily. Wherever you are this morning, God has a word for us today. And I want us to sit back and anticipate the word of God. A powerful reminder today. Because if never a time that God's people and this world needs to prepare, it is now for the second coming of Christ. Hallelujah. We're going to be looking in our Bibles, St. Matthew chapter 24, and we're going to be <clears throat> looking on as Sister Joan Chung, Mitchell Monroe Chung comes to read verses 1 through 14, verse 24, and verses 36 through 42. May God be pleased to add his richest blessings to the reading of his holy words. Good morning, everyone. Our reading is taken from St. Matthew chapter 24, 1 through 14, 24, and verse 36 to 42. Then Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came up to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said to them, Do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another 
that shall not be thrown down. Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For a nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, pestilence and earthquakes in various places. All these things are the beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, but will betray one another and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. Verse 24. For, for false Christ and false prophet will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Verse 36. But of that day and hour, no man knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my father only. But as the days of Noah were, so also will be the coming of the son of man. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving into marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them away so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Then two men will be in the field, and one will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken and the other left. Verse 42, watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. This is the word of the Lord. We honor it by saying, thanks be to God. Praise God, the word of the Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to be, you remain seated, you will view from the screen the hymn, Jesus is coming, sing the glad song. And I know our senior pastor will be assisting us as we lead out in this hymn. A reminder, a wonderful reminder that Jesus is coming. Hallelujah. Jesus is coming, oh, sing the glad word. Coming for those he redeemed by his blood. Coming to reign as their glorified Lord. Jesus is coming again. Jesus is coming. Coming again, Jesus is coming again. Shout the glad tidings or mountain and plain. Jesus is coming again. Jesus is coming, the dead shall arise. Love was shall meet in that joy. Up together to him in the skies. Jesus is coming again. Jesus is coming, is coming again. Jesus is coming again. Shall the glad tidings or mountain and plain? Jesus is. is coming, his saints to release, coming to 
God. We anticipate his coming. I look forward to his coming because the way I see things running now in Jamaica, across the world, even so, Lord, come quickly. We're going to pause again just to remember the churches that are being persecuted, people who are being persecuted. The month of November is the month when that focus is made. And especially November, between November 2 and 4, we need to remember that there are those persons who are on the field out there, missionaries. We are still having people who are being martyred for the faith. And we want to take that request and Another request to the Lord. Hallelujah. Father in heaven, we stand in the gap this morning. We pray as we call upon you and no other. Because indeed, so many of us have experienced you as our healer, as the Jehovah Shama. The God who is there with us, the Jehovah Rapha, the one who heals. Right now, Lord, I pray, I pause to pray. And the believers here, you said that whatever we bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And we pray right now, Lord, that you will be with your people across the nations. And especially those who are in that area, the 2040 window. Those on the Eurasia and the Asia Pacific region, Lord, where they are being challenged because of your name. Some are being put to death because of your name. Some of them are being muzzled. They have to be trying to, to, to find creative ways so that your gospel will continue to go forth. Be with them, Lord, in a very special way this morning. Help them, Lord, not to quit, not to give up, not to become weary in well-doing. But I pray, God, that uh, you will give them that strength and the peace that passeth all understanding. So I pray in a very special way, Lord, for our Nazarene missionaries. And I pray for other missionaries who are represented in all the nations across this world. As we continue to remember those who are being persecuted for their faith. It may be as close as neighboring islands. Wherever they are, thou knowest. And I'm glad that we serve a God who is omniscient, the God who knows everything, a God who is omnipresent because he's everywhere at the same time. And the God who is omnipotent, he's all powerful. God, we call upon you this morning and we ask that you be with your people. We don't know, Lord, in this pandemic, we're hearing all kinds of restrictions that are being reeled out one after the other. And we don't know, Lord, if very soon there may be some very strict limitations, even 
on our freedom to worship. But God, we stand up and we stand against all the forces that may arise right now and would want, Lord, to muzzle the church. We know that the church of the living God must prevail and it will continue to go forward in spite of. After years and we bring the authorities in our country. We bring the authorities, all nations, and we pray that they will be subjected to your rule. And Lord, I bring before you brothers and sisters from our congregation who are not well. I pray, God, that you will minister to mind, to body. I pray that they will experience physical touch from you that no other can give. Even, Lord, as they lift their faith this morning, just touching the hem of your garment. I pray that you will come through. I pray, God, for all our brothers, sisters who may be facing, Lord, who will have to go, Lord, to the hospital over the next weeks, days. I pray, God, that you will be with them. You know everything, Lord. You know everyone, Lord, who is facing whatever the challenges there are. I don't need to call any name this morning, Lord. Thou knowest. You said every hair on our head is a number. That's the extent to which thou knowest. And so right now, Lord, I plead your blood on the behalf of our brothers and our sisters who have challenges at this time. Be with them, Jehovah Rapha. Be with them wherever they are right now. Remember the shutting right now, Lord. Be with them in their sick room, Lord. Overshadow. Bring peace of mind right now. And may they experience your healing touch. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the blessed Holy Spirit, your will be done. Your will be done. And God's people say, Amen. We count it done. Hallelujah. 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 We're getting ready to hear from God's servant. And before he comes, the praise team will just be reminding us in song again of the second coming of Christ. Jesus is coming again. He's coming for his saints. And whether you're ready or not, we want to remind you this morning, our Jesus is coming. Hallelujah. Praise God. Jesus is coming again. He's, He's coming, coming for the sins. You, you gotta, gotta meet him in white. You gotta meet him pure. You gotta, you gotta meet him in the air. For the King, King of Kings. You gotta meet Christ holy. Oh, Jesus is coming again. Oh, Jesus is coming again. Oh, Lord. He's coming for the Oh, no. 
Believers, let us set ourselves 
So we will be ready when he comes. Hallelujah. I just want to pause this morning. Very special day for some persons. We're getting ready for the speaker. But today, or in another two days, this week, this month, very, very special. The 9th of November is very significant in this church. If you look on the screen, we have two brothers celebrating birthdays. And I want to give a shout out, a happy birthday shout out to them. Fitz Williams and Hoyt, brother Hoyt Smichael. I believe they may be looking on this morning and we want to say happy, happy birthday when it comes on Tuesday. And not only is the ninth, there are others who will be celebrating. Um, just put it back there for me. Um, Sister Melis, God bless our sister. She will be celebrating the day after, the 10th. And we have um, Carmen Dixon and, um, all right, that's for this week. They will be celebrating. We want to recognize them. But we have, we want to recognize our brother. He's in our midst, I'm sorry. He didn't take his partner. But they um, will be celebrating the 9th. The 9th is significant. Mr. and Mrs. Uriah Quarry. Brother Quarry is here. In come, we spread on my ears this morning. I may make sure I wanted to know how many years. And they are 37 years. Can we put our hands together? They are going to be celebrating on the 9th of this month. So the 9th, 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 birthdays, anniversaries. God bless you. And I trust that you will have a wonderful time as you celebrate this week, Sister Melis and others who are celebrating in the month of November. It's time for the word. God's servant is here with us. Our senior pastor, Reverend Lionel Brown, no stranger to us. God has been speaking to him. God continues to speak to him and he's going to speak through him to his people this morning. So immediately after the renewed ones minister in song, God's servant will come with the word. May God bless him as he comes to us this morning. Hallelujah. Do you still have a praise for him this morning? Hallelujah. What a day, That's glorious be. day that will be. Hallelujah. What a day, glorious day that will be.
upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. And when he takes me by the hand and lead me to the promised land, oh, what a day, glorious end that will be. morning brothers and sisters I didn't hear you say good morning thank you very much I am the excellence so you must say good morning who <laughs> what a day it will be when my Jesus I shall see, when I look upon his face, not any human face, the only excellence I know is him, excellent in all the world. He saved me by his grace, thanks to the renewed one, and thanks to you for lifting my spirit Thanks to the musician for coordinating with the renewed one in the praise and worship. Thanks to the moderator who has led and the spirit of the Lord who has guided the service. This morning, if it were left to me, I would not have spoken on the team steps into the future. But I feel constrained of the Lord to return to the book of Matthew chapter 24. And Matthew chapter 24 came into place as Jesus sought to warn against religious leaders and what they can do and what they will do to us if people are not careful. So I want you to turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 24. And we are talking about steps into the future. Father, guide me, your servant, as I remind your people as to 
the steps that you talk about as we navigate the future. Jesus, the songs that we sung remind us that you are coming back. And the disciples themselves, Lord, as well as us, are very concerned. So we want to know how we can be prepared for the future. Will you now guide me and inspire your word? Holy Spirit, give the right interpretation to me so that I in turn can interpret and bring truth to your people. Continue, Lord, to bless this congregation and keep our focus on you and on the word. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You're now at the 24th chapter of St. Matthew's Gospel. Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the very place where the prophet Zechariah had predicted that the Messiah would stand when he comes to establish his kingdom. You can find that in your own time in Zechariah chapter 14 and verse 4. The same place he's now speaking from. Where he came to establish his kingdom. I said it was a fitting place to ask Jesus when he would come in power. And I did not ask, but the disciples asked. Look at their question. The Bible said, as Jesus spoke about the destruction of the temple, the beautiful edifice, the great temple that Solomon had built and was renovated, Jesus said, the temple that the Jews and the disciples pride themselves on. Matter of fact, the woman that we call the Samaritan woman, she said to Jesus, do you see that mountain? Do you see that hill? Do you see that place? That's the place where our father worshiped. Jesus said, yes, it is a good place to worship. But the best thing to do is to worship God in spirit and in truth. Because as he said to the disciple, the hour is coming when the temple that you worship in will be no more. So it's more important to worship God rather than to focus on this edifice or this temple. For one day the temple will crash. The Babylonians will come and they will bring to naught. They will bring to rebels the temple that you are now seeing. Truly, I tell you, not one stone here will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. Ever stone, the whole temple, or in our days we would say, the whole church building that we now are priding ourselves on. We spend to build it. We do everything. But Jesus said, one day will come. When it will not be there for you to worship in any longer. 
So now, learn, begin to learn to worship God from wherever you are. And worship him in spirit and in truth. The disciples became curious. And in verse 3, they said to Jesus, Jesus, when will this thing happen? And what will be the sign of your coming? and of the end of the age. In other words, when will the temple be thrown down or tore down? And what are some signs of your coming? We want to know Jesus. We do not want to be left in the dark. We are concerned. We want to know when all that you're talking about is going to take place. Note in verse 4, Jesus replied, emphasize, emphasize, reply, emphasize events that would take place before the end of the age. He made sure that he emphasized, he made clear to them the events that would take place before the end of the age. He pointed out to his disciples that they should be more that or they should be less concerned with knowing the exact date of his coming. What they should be concerned about is preparation for his coming. Very often, like the disciples, we are concerned about when Jesus will come. Jesus said, that is not for me to tell you because that is in the hand of my father. He knows. He planned the time. Then what should we do? If we don't know when you are coming, what should we do? Jesus' reply was simple. Be ready for my coming. Are you here? Your concern should not be when I am coming back. Your, your concern should be how prepared I am for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. For Jesus has given us before this things that are important. He said, my coming will be quick. My coming will be fast. He said, as the light then move from the east to the west, so will be the swiftness of the coming of the Son of Man. Therefore, since it is, we do not know exactly, Jesus would not, was not giving them an exact time. No date concerning his coming. Rather, he said to them, the important thing is that you be prepared. In other words, be on the alert. In other words, don't be getting ready, but stay ready. That was the message. Jesus said to them, if you're going to be ready, you must live consistent Christian life. If you are going to be ready, it must not be at today you are with Jesus and tomorrow you are with the devil. There must be a consistency in your walk with God. Jehovah. So he said, Don't look on other people. And uh, be careful of loose living. Are you hearing me? 
Be careful of loose living. Why? Because since you are thinking about my coming, and since I do not give you an exact time when I will come, then stay ready until I come. We're here. And then I notice that in verse 4 to 8 also, he said, since you want to know some of the signs, some of the things that will precede my coming, let me tell you of some. He said, first of all, there will be deceivers. Lord have mercy. Is somebody here? He said, as they probe, he said, look out for deceivers. Watch out for deceivers because there will be more and more and more. Look at verse 3 and verse 4. Do not allow, do not leave yourself to ignorance. I am allowing you to know what will be signs. What are some things that will tell you that I am coming back? And he said the first is deception. There will be many deceivers. The fact that, the fact is that whenever we look for signs, we become very susceptible to being deceived. There are many false prophets. He said in 11 and verse 24, that is 24 and verse 11 and 24. Jesus said to his disciple, in my coming, preceding my coming, there are going to be many false prophets around with counterfeit signs of spiritual power and authority. And the only sure way to keep from being deceived is to focus on Christ and his word. Can I say that again? The only way of being stop yourself from being deceived is to focus on Christ and his word. The song say on Christ, the solid rock, I stand all of the ground is sinking sun. I say to you, don't look on or be persuaded by special signs. And don't spend your time looking at other people. I say once again, look at Jesus who is the author and finisher of your faith. We spend time looking at other people. Jesus said, I must repeat this. Your concern is about signs, demonstration, power of men and glory. He said, not in this chapter, but in other books. He said the day of the Antichrist is fast appearing. And who know the Antichrist or his followers? Nobody knows up to now. We call men who are doing all kind of things the Antichrist. But Jesus said, what is going to make it very deceptive to people is the fact that the Antichrist will be able to call down fire from heaven. He like Pharaoh. Men 
will be able to make cynic wood turn into cynic or staff turn into cynic. They will catch the cynic by its tail and it will turn into a rod again. And if you are not connected to Christ and the word, if you don't understand what Jesus said, then you will be deceived. To think that here comes God. Here is God. For when a man is able to call down fire from heaven, is able to do some things. And we know not all times, but sometimes with the authority of the wicked one. If we are not, if we do not know and have the eyes of discernment, we will think that he's led of God. For only God can do those things. We tell ourselves. So Jesus said, the first thing that you must open your eyes to is the fact of deception. There will be deceivers coming on the land. And what, what is their purpose? Why are they here? To lead us away from our faith, away from God. To begin to foster a faith in them. Jesus said. Be careful of them. Be careful. Because this is a time for them. And therefore. Be on the alert. Be less concerned. About the date of my coming. And be concerned. About the preparation for my coming. Be on the alert. For that which can turn you away from me and cause your loyalty to become theirs. Then Jesus said in verse 9 to 10, he said another sign that will you can that that evident before my coming is persecution and death. Of some. Persecution. And death of some. Brothers and sisters. We may not be facing. Intense persecution. Now. But Christian in other parts. Of the world. Are suffering for their faith. So I challenge us. When we pray. Let us not pray selfishly. But remember. That. Those who are suffering, those who are persecuted in other parts of the world as the disciples were persecuted. They are our brothers and they are our sisters. So while we may not be having intense persecution here in Jamaica, remember people are persecuted. The people, the 17 missionaries, who I don't, after yes, the day before yesterday, they were not found. There was still a search for them. Somebody can inform me if they have been found. But they are persecuted. It is, it may not be that they are being lush or they are being flogged, but there is mental. There is emotional persecution. And not only them are suffering mentally and emotionally, but their relatives everywhere are going through hours of suffering, days of suffering, months of suffering. They went there to build an orphanage just in our same Caribbean territory. They went there from Ohio to build an orphanage so that children, children can have a good place to live. But the, 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 
The reporter tells us that they were captured and now a ransom of 17 million US dollar is on their head, thousand dollar on for each head. People are suffering. People are persecuted. And these are persecuted for righteousness, for right sake. But Jesus said, when you are persecuted for righteousness sake, rejoice and be glad. Why? For so persecuted they and him that was before you. Yes. Let's ask God, what can I, what can you do to help them who are in trouble? Jesus said, another of the sign of my coming is persecution will be on the land more and more. I want for us to notice also, Jesus said, not only persecutors will be on the land, but he said, because of the increase of wickedness, because of the increase, because of the challenge that wickedness is bringing to us, the love of most will wax or grow cold. The love for God, the love for the things of God, out of fear, love will wax cold. Many will not love God to the point that they are prepared to make any kind of sacrifice for God and for the things of God. Jesus is making it clear. Look in verse 12. Because iniquity will abound. Increase. The word abound is the same as increase. Because iniquity. Because wickedness. Will be more on the land. Where the fear of God will be diminished and people will become so engrossed in wickedness. Fear for not wanting to die, fear for not wanting to suffer will cause us, if we are not careful, to lose our love for God and succumb to the asking of man or men. But Jesus said, and I'm excited about this, even though wickedness will become more and more prevalent, and even though there are those who because they are not prepared or they do not have the guts to stand up against wickedness and unrighteousness. Even though many will be bowing, Jesus said, there will be some. Look in the scripture. Look in verse 13. But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. They say to me that it is not when we begin our relationship with God. It is not how much we do for God. When it comes to the end of the day. But it's whether or not our Christian life. 
our fervency, our love for God and love for others remain consistent until Jesus comes. Yes. He said, and this is some consolation. Not, and this does not say we ought to live anyhow we want to live. But they, they probed Jesus the more. And they said, is there any other sign? Is there any other thing apart from the fall, the deception, the false prophets, and the wars, and rumors of wars, and the famine that will come on the land, and the pestilence and disease that will overtake the land. And when we talk about land here, we're talking about earth surface, the land. It simply means the seven billion people who are existing on earth. At no time in the history before of our world when disease is affecting everybody at the same time. Whether or not it is from a lab or whether or not it comes from the wicked one. Or the wicked one allows some people to make it. And to let it loose in the atmosphere. So that we can be contaminated by it. Whether or not the intention of wicked nation and wicked people. Is to see how much money they can raise. By letting loose this virus. The fact is. There is. A cure. The cure. Is not the temper cure. That we are now introduced to. The permanent cure. Is the blood of Jesus Christ, especially on the heart of the believers. This is not the first time that the whole, a whole nation is affected by disease, virus, plague. We recall in Egypt that this was. But the Bible said, the people who took caution, and it was not, and I'm not against it, but it was not vaccine that they were to be, that were to be taken into their system. But it was simple. Place the blood on the lintel of your door. For when I see the blood, I would never equate the vaccine, nor the mask, or any of the device that is being used now to keep COVID away from our bodies, are out of our immune system. I am not equating any of them to the blood of Jesus Christ because all of them are temporary fixed. And so, my friends, in this age of wickedness, when iniquity is abounding, and when Jesus said it's going to be more and more, more and more disease will be poured upon this land in the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, to the Israelites living in Goshen. He said, obey me. Keep the blood. Be sensible. Keep the blood on the lintel of your door. For when I see the blood, I will pass over you. My friend, Jesus is coming back. There are those who said if he was coming back, he would have come already. 
The same message is preached over and over and over again. Until the world has become critical of the church and those who propagate this gospel of the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. So now they are saying, the church is lying. Christians are lying. They are deceived. Because they are looking for return of Jesus. And as far as we are concerned, over 2,000 years have gone. And their expectation is just where it was. Jesus said to tell the world and to tell the church today that a thousand years in the sight of God is like one day. But not only that, Jesus said, what is holding back the coming of, of him? For he is the one that will be sent back to us by the father. He said the reason why his father had not yet come to claim the world is that because the entire world is not reached by the gospel yet. Look in the scripture. That's what the scripture said. Jesus said one of the things that is holding back and one of the prophecy that has not yet been fulfilled. One of the signs that has not yet been fulfilled. Is the gospel reaching the ends of the world? Because he said, look, once the gospel reached the end of the world, then will come Jesus Christ. His long anticipated return will be ushered in. I don't know when. The gospel will reach the end of the earth. The message of hope and of salvation. The only hope. I don't know when the gospel will reach the end of the earth. But my friends, I am believing that it will not take much longer. Why? Because yesterday, man had to go where people are in order to get the gospel to them. Today, technology has provided that man does not have to physically go any longer. Men to the, are going to the end of the earth. We'll be hearing the gospel soon in their own language and dialect. It is said that soon we will be cultivating UPSA. The astronauts, America and China, and other big developed worlds, they are now preparing to build houses and to provide agricultural land. So that you can cultivate what you will up there. And you can build and live up there. I don't know. Jesus did not say that in the scripture. But knowledge is so vastly developed. That we do not know what else is left that man cannot do. Except to breathe the breath of life into mankind. Jesus said in verse 15, when you see standing in the holy place, that is in the center, Jerusalem, the abomination that causes desolation, which is spoken of by the prophet Daniel. He said, let no one on the house stop go down to take anything out of us. It's the swiftness of all that is happening. He's speaking up. Let no one 
in the field, go back there. In other words, move forward because trouble time, we sing about it. Trouble times are here. If there is one time of trouble that is now surfacing on the Jamaica landscape is now. We have never read about it before. We have experienced adoption and heard of adoption before. But more and more, we cannot understand why five-year-old, nine, 13-year-old are adopted. We cannot understand how iniquity is so abounding that mankind love for one another has grown so cold that man will just look on the other and just slit the throat like they did to the 76 or 78 year old woman and her sister. Jesus said, all of these things will happen before I return. Did you know that? He said, don't become disturbed to the point where you are afraid to move out of your house. The young ladies on the university campus and you tech campus, they are saying that we are now afraid to leave the campus. We are now afraid to leave our homes and travel to school, even to work. In the community of Portland, St. Thomas, men and women are walking around with long machete. They are getting ready for war. They are getting ready to fight. Why? Because iniquity is abounding. Men have become haters of men. As well as haters of God. And thus, they have set themselves to destroy their own. Jesus said, and I want to re-emphasize it. Before my coming, those things that I now tell you of, they are going to be evident and they are going to be increasing. They are going to be more and more. You are going to see more atrocities. You are going to be seeing more gruesome murder and killings than you have ever been told before. You know why? Because men's hearts are becoming more and more vile. And the Bible said in closing, unless God shortened the days. Did you hear me? Are you here still? Unless Jehovah God Sean days, in other words, unless he comes quickly. The very elect will likely put their hands to wickedness. And sometimes God shorten our days. Because he knows that we already know. But tomorrow, because of the likelihood as he sees it, that we may turn away from him and begin to love the pleasures of the world and begin to engage in evil practices, he shorten our days. Jesus said, Pastor Brown, I want you to remind yourself and to remind your church 
that I have not left them in ignorance pertaining to my return. I give them some signs because they ask for it. As to what will be some of the occurrences. The things that will happen before my actual return. And here they are. And we will continue to speak of them. Again in closing. Jesus wants us to remember. The time of his coming. While it is important. It should not be our main concentration. It should not be what we desire to know. Instead, what we should do and be anxious about is our readiness. For we do not know when. Exactly he will put in his appearance. But we know by the signs, by the things that are happening, that he predicts will happen. And how engaging they are. How quickly they are happening. That Jesus coming is nigh at hand. Only those who are ready when Jesus comes. And the song said, when he come to reward his servants, whether it be morning, noon, or night. In other words, the time is not yet told and will not be told. For he wants us to be aware that we must all waste be ready. We must always be ready. My question to us right now is, are we ready for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ? The songwriter asks us some questions. Very pointed question. In that he said. Have you been to Jesus. For the cleansing power. Are you washed. In the blood of the lamb. Is your garment. Clean and made white. And your garment mean your heart. Is your heart wash? It's the malice. It's the grudge. It's the envy. It's the self will. Everything that can contaminate and corrupt the heart and prevent you from entering the kingdom of God when Jesus comes. Is your heart cleansed from them? If not, I say to you that your membership in, in the church will be of no avail. What will avail is the cleanness or the or, 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 or the state of your heart when Jesus comes. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? As you sit here this morning and is anticipating the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and seeing as I read them the signs that leading up to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And as you hear that soon. The gospel will reach the end of the earth. Using technology. 
And technology is developing fast. So in another few months, in another few days, the way technology is developing, is moving, it could propel, it could push the gospel to the end of the earth. And Jesus said, soon as that happened, my coming, it will not will be, but it will be. The question I ask again is, are you ready for Jesus if he were to come at any time? May I ask you to stand, please. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing poor? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are your garments Men spotless and whiter white than snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed? In the blood, in the, blood, in in the, the soul, soul cleansing blood of the Lamb. Are your garments spotless? Are they whiter than snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed? Are you washed in the blood? In the soul, cleansing blood of the Lamb. Are your garments spotless? Are they whiter than snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Lay aside the garment that are stained with sin. Are you washed? Will your soul be ready for the mansion's bright? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? My Lord, are you washed in the blood? In the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments And just before we pray the closing prayer, are you prepared for the return of Jesus? You have been telling people that Jesus is going to be returning. You're telling people that they must be ready for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But turn the question onto yourself and ask, am I ready? I see what is happening. And I see signs are fulfilling. The signs are quickly taking, coming to pass and are passing. Am I ready? If Jesus were to come. If not, this morning give you an opportunity to be ready. Jesus said, if you come and confess to me your sins, I will forgive you of your sins. That which will prevent you from being ready. If you are prepared to cast it on me, Turn it over to me. I will forgive you. I will cleanse you. But you have to be purposeful. You have to come and express your need. Is there a person in church this morning who have not yet surrendered your heart to Jesus? But you're also concerned 
that Jesus could come at any time from what you see and what you're hearing. And you want to be ready to meet him. Therefore, the things that you are doing that you know is not pleasing to him and will not make you ready for his coming. You want to surrender your life so that he can help you to overcome those things and prepare you for his return. We're singing one more verse of that song. And if you want us to pray for you, walk from your seat and stand right at the altar. We want to pray with you this morning. Lay aside the garment that I stain with sin and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Will you turn? Are they whiter than snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed? Lord, I do not want you to come and I'm not ready. I know my lifestyle. I know what is in my heart. I know that unless I get rid of some things that is in my heart and consistent with my life, I will not be ready for your coming. I want to be ready. Are ah, you wash in the blood? In the soul, cleansing blood of the Lamb. Oh, are your garments spotless? Are they whiter than snow? Are you washed in, in the, the blood, blood of the Lamb? Bow your heads, please. Our Father. It's not the disciples, it's you who make known to us what are some signs that will precede your coming. Lord, are we weakness in them? Yes, we are weakness in them. We are witnesses of the signs that you say would precede your coming. We're glad you have not left us in ignorance. You make known to us so that we can be ready. Lord, you remind me of the necessity, the importance of not getting ready, but stay ready. And so you have led me to remind my congregants, my brothers and sisters, about the need to get ready. We're not mainly concerned about the when of your coming. We are more concerned and should be more concerned about our preparedness for your coming. Lord, please, if we have been living a life that you, that will not prepare us, will not make us ready for your coming, we pray that thou lay on conviction now. For God, we do not want to be left out of the kingdom. We want to receive our crown of righteousness. We don't want to hear, you have run well. But what hinder you from obeying the truth and be ready for my coming? We don't want to left behind. We don't want God to be thinking of your coming and not be preparing for it. So God, as we go from church today, may we reread, may we read again Matthew chapter 
24. Because there are other signs which we are going to be talking about as your spirit leads us. Lord, help us not to be like the Pharisees in chapter and the scribes in chapter 23. May we seek to live what we preach in conjunction with what we practice. Go with us from church today. And may we settle once more that wherever I am, in what place I am, with whom I am, I will endeavor by God's help and grace to make my life shine and pleasing to God. Hear us. Because I pray and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures there below. Praise him above the heavenly host. Praise Father. Son and Holy Ghost. Amen. May I ask you to be seated for a minute. Once again, I remind you, don't take it lightly. The evidence is right here. God never left himself without weaknesses. And the things that he said would have happened, they are happening right in our eyes. But he said, remember, the end is not yet. So in other words, things that you see now, the killing, the gruesome crime, will be even worse. But before man destroy all the seven billion people on earth, since I have made them and breathed my life into them, I will correct all the iniquities by bringing those who are ready outside of this world and take charge of those who are left behind. Be therefore ready. Remain ready. Hallelujah. I want to allow the church to know that we, that I have not given to you the whole communion today because the whole church of the Nazarene nationally across the whole Jamaica will be taking holy communion on the 21st of this month all the people called Nazarene in Jamaica and Nazarene in the world where our people are, we will be inviting them to take communion together, to celebrate Christ's death and resurrection, to celebrate his blood on the 21st of this month. I want you to prepare your heart for the entire Jamaica will be meeting in one service. We will be in church around the island. The word will be brought to us. Testimony. It's going to be a time of praise and hallelujah. As the entire Jamaica meet together. 
to worship our King of Kings, our Excellence, Jehovah, the Almighty God. I ask you to get ready for that time of celebration. Please remember that midweek prayer service is six on Wednesday. The board meet today and will determine any change in any of those. And why I meet on Tuesday and NMI meet on Tuesday, November 9. 5.30 face to face and NY meet 5.30 p.m. on Thursday. Please bear that in mind. NMI encourage you to help them to support the mission cause and to do all that they can for the church. And they want you to help them and by your support you will buy a ticket from them. They do not believe that you should just give for nothing as you give to them. You will get fish. You will get bami. You will get breadfruit. That is roast breadfruit. Festival. Onion palm fish. Pepper palm fish. Vinegar palm fish. God of mercy. You will get all of those on fish. And if you want beside fish, some ketchup, you will get it. So please support the NMI. Sister Sinanan, Sister Brown, and maybe others have tickets. If they give you what you are not satisfied with, quality, I know you will get. But you also want some quantity. And I know that they are set on giving you that. Support them on the day of their fish fry, the 26th of this month. You know what are these? Same thing. Tambourines. My God. Sister Lynette, we must go back to the old time part when we lick the tambourine. Right, Tracy Ann? You remember when you used to lick the tambourine? Yeah. So we want to say thanks to Sister Pauline James who is responsible to encourage herself and others to provide for us eight tambourines. And this is Brother Plumber Kind. And uh, those who have supported you in making possible these tambourines to be blessed by the church of the Almighty. Our Father, we commit to you these musical instruments. We ask you to bless them. We ask you to protect them. And we ask you Manual of the church, our constitution said, 
all church property must be under a board of trustee. And if the chairperson is here, then we are going to be asking that they determine how these are protected. And we don't get them to sit down on them. We get them to play music. Right, Chris? Right. Dervan? Tracy Ann? Sister Lynette? Sister Laverne? I'm going to make a play at the tambourine. And James like to play tambourine. You want drum set? That's all right. Drum set you will get. Praise the Lord. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it was a pleasure serving you on the Lord today. You have an offering and a tithe that you'd like to give. Anybody came late? <clears throat> um, sister. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. Oh, soon and very soon, we are going to see the king.